Okay, uh, I think we can get this started. Um, my name is uh, Nicolas Tranger. I work for uh, for Scality. Um, this is yeah. Bjorn. I'm uh, on the, the OpenStack team. Uh, we've been working uh, a bit on the Manila driver. And today we will uh, present what Scality did in um, in the scope of OpenStack, how we integrated OpenStack. But first, we'll start with uh, an overview of how we could perceive OpenStack and the storage components within it, and a very short introduction in Scality and our Ring product, how it works, the high-level architecture. So uh, within OpenStack, the storage landscape, um, you have your OpenStack cloud, which is running somewhere, can be um, on-premise, or it can be um, by some um, public cloud provider. Um, and within OpenStack, you have four, there's only three over there, but you have four different um, storage services right now. There is um, Cinder, which is responsible for, for block storage, uh, creating block volumes and exposing them to, to your virtual machines. Uh, we have Swift, which is an object storage implementation. Uh, we have very recently Manila, which allows you to provision shared file systems and also expose those through NFS or SMB to, um, again, your virtual machines. And then finally, we have Glance, which allows you to store uh, virtual machine images and then allows Nova to retrieve those images and boot instances from it. Now, most of these things are, are running on, on very standard hardware. There's uh, no real connection from any OpenStack component to a very specific um, hardware platform. Um, given this, um, you can run into sort of silos within your deployment. Um, You'll need a SAN for your block devices. You'll need a NAS for Manila and allowing it to expose um, shared file systems. And then you'll need this um, Swift cluster um, to basically implement Swift. Now, the view of Scality on this is given our product uh, called Scality Ring, which is a software-defined storage product. Uh, we can allow you to basically run any OpenStack storage need on top of a single um, storage layer. So um, again, in this picture, you have the four different components. Uh, we integrated a driver or a backend for every single one of them. Um, and this allows you to um, use Scality Ring to store the data that those components need. Um, and in turn, use, well, benefit from uh, what Ring provides when it comes to resilience of data. Um, so we do replication erasure coding. We have geo support. Uh, we have a very quickly self-healing system. Uh, we know how to manage uh, hundreds or even thousands of nodes installation. And all of this running on, uh, on standard x86 servers. So uh, a short overview of Scality Ring. Um, the Ring product itself is, is not a hardware product. It's fully software defined. It's a user space solution. Um, so we don't have any specific hardware requirements. Uh, requirements. Um, we don't require any costly or both in time as well as in, um, in, in money uh, validation cycles. And uh, we support, we easily support uh, heterogeneous uh, hardware clusters, even across major generations. So we have customers who installed the product years and years ago, and they just keep extending it and extending it, but they don't need to buy in 2016 the same kind of server they bought in, say, 2012, which would be impossible. Um, so you can just gr keep growing the system with totally new hardware. Um, the internals of the system are, are fully distributed. It's some kind of peer-to-peer -peer, um, architecture. So we don't have any um, centralized cluster map like some other solutions do require. And we don't need to keep the history of this map, which is also um, a drawback of, of several other um, storage products. Uh, we don't need any centralized coordination at all. Um, nodes will just connect to each other and, and make the right decisions. Um, and as such, there is no single point of failure. So we can have servers crashing, we can have racks crashing, we can have disks cr crashing, of course. Um, now, despite all of, well, thanks to all of this, um, the, storage, the, the data you put in the storage system uh, is, remains very durable and, and resilient. Uh, so we have some production proven data replication or erasure coding mechanisms, um, depending on, on the kind of data you're trying to store. Um, as I said before, uh, we are very location aware. You can have multiple geographical uh, regions. You can have multiple data centers. Within the data center, we take care of things like lanes, racks, and then in the end, servers and disks. 
Um, and given all of this, the system is really always on. Even if you upgrade it or you extend the capacity, uh, we have systems which have been running for, for years in a row without, without any, any downtime or unavailability of the data. Um, this is a very quick overview of how um, a typical installation would look like, although this is obviously a very small one with only um, six physical storage servers. We do require six servers. You can do it on smaller installations, but we never do this uh, in production. Um, now, on every single one, on every single server, uh, we install what we call a node. We install six of those. Um, and then logically, these nodes, they, um, they construct some kind of a ring, hence the product name. Um, and these 36 storage nodes, um, they, they form an address space, a key space. Um, and every node is, will be responsible for, for a, a part of this key space. Now, this key space is constructed such that um, look, when you put in some data or three copies of data, those are dispersed as much as possible. They don't end up on the same drive. That would be terrible, or even in the same rack if, if, if possible. Um, and then these nodes, they, they just run standalone. So whenever a node goes down or becomes unavailable or there is a network split, then the system will automatically start to reconstruct the data or basically restore the class of service. That's how we call it, uh, like the number of replicas or the number of data and parity chunks you want when using erasure coding um, between them. So this is, again, a very quick overview of our I.O. stack. Um, on the very bottom, you have your servers, which have hard drives in them. Um, and then we have some I.O. daemons, um, where every I.O. daemon is responsible for a single hard drive. And then on, to on top of that, we have the storage nodes, which are the nodes I, I talked about before. Um, hard drives are shared across nodes. Um, and then on top of all of this, we have what we call the connectors layer. Uh, we have lots of connectors, um, where one of them could be, so, we do both object storage as well as file storage. So we have connectors for object storage um, through, for example, CDMI, S3, um, or a homegrown, very efficient uh, HTTP-based um, protocol, so a low-level HTTP-based protocol. Um, then we have our own scale-out file system, uh, which is a clustered file system sitting on top of this object storage layer. Uh, and that one can be exposed uh, locally as a fuse file system on your Linux machine. Uh, we have a built-in NFS server um, if you need and if has access to your files um, and directories. And then finally, we integrate with, uh, with Samba for um, Windows access to the file system again. Um, these connectors are fully scale out, so you can run as many of them as you want, and they are also fully stateless. So if one of them crashes, then you can just fail over to one of the other ones. So. Um, scale it your ring and OpenStack. Um, what do we do with OpenStack? How do we integrate with the different uh, OpenStack services? Um, first of all, a little overview of the use cases um, of storage within OpenStack. Uh, first of all, on the very um, bottom left, uh, you have the local operating system images. As you know, uh, when an operating system is running, um, there's quite, especially during boot, there's quite a high load of um, number of IOPS on, on that system. Now, that is something you definitely want to do locally, um, ideally on some SSD or um, other flash-based storage solution. Um, if that's not available, a local hard drive will do. Um, but there's no real need to, um, to disperse this storage. You can just keep it locally because you're not supposed to be storing any sensitive or um, data you have to retain over time uh, on your operating system um, volume. Then we have um, slightly bigger things, which are the, um, the virtual machine images you constructed and want to deploy in your OpenStack um, deployment. Um, these are bigger, so they go into the gigabytes to nowadays even hundreds of gigabytes in size. And these contain both your operating system and potentially your application, depending on how you deploy your application. Um, then higher up the stack, we will have um, or local block devices or because it really doesn't make sense nowadays to put a file system on some block device somewhere if you can just have uh, a shared file system uh, where you put static content uh, for some web server, um, keep some administrative files, um, so it could be a document repository, uh, log data you want to store for a longer period of time. And then finally, and at very large scales, which is terabytes to most definitely petabytes in scale, uh, you want to use object storage um, because other systems will just not be able to manage it anymore. And this could be um, video content, um, 
how do we have there some some medical stuff, um, research data. Um, so the actual integrations, um, we integrate with Glans for your volume um, image. Uh, sorry, VM image storage, uh, which goes through our um, REST connector. We call this project Skeleton Glance Store. It's currently not yet upstream, but we will work with uh, the Glance Store community to get it as part of, the, of their distribution. Secondly, we have Swift, the object storage solution, um, where we again use the very same backend, which is the most efficient backend when using Skeleton Ring, um, to store your objects. Um, we hook there into the Swift object server because there is no real official way to extend Swift, and this seemed like the, the, the best way to hook in there. As such, we are fully API compatible with Swift. Functionally, um, any middleware you, which you may be running in your Swift proxy server uh, will still work, even though you replace the Swift object server backend from local hard disks to um, scalability storage. Uh, we did in, um, code some, some, some extra things to, um, to make it more geo-aware, given the scalability product being very geo-aware. And this is fully open source. You can retrieve it from our, our GitHub repository, which we'll show in the end. Um, then for Cinder, um, for data volumes, um, we provision uh, sparse files, QCO2 formatted sparse files on our scale out file system. So again, if you want to use a volume from different um, compute nodes, you just can because the, the, the file system is, distrib is distributed. And this um, driver has been upstream since the Grizzly release. Um, now, the most recent contribution uh, we've been working on is uh, integration with Manila, where we use the NFS and SMB capabilities of um, our distributed file system. Um, this one is also open source. It's to be, to be upstreamed, um, but we need to tune it a bit first before we, we want to push it. So after this, um, uh, after this, I let it to Bjorn to, to give a demo of what we're doing. It's all live, so cross fingers, everything works. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So yeah, we have a box here with, uh, with six storage nodes, a little bit like on the slide you showed before, and uh, what we call a supervisor that is uh, aware of all the nodes, and you can use it to manage your ring. But it's only for dia diagnostic and management. So it can be totally offline, and your storage will continue to work, no problem. So uh, I'm going to show you the, the supervisor UI a little bit quick. And uh, here it is. Uh, I think you can see it, yes. So it's hard to see the box down there. But essentially, we have, we have six, six servers here, each containing six nodes that all have access to the local disks. Uh, and we actually have two rings. So we have one ring for, for the raw, raw data and one for metadata. Or if you're storing stuff on our scale out file system, that would be extended attributes, timestamps, and stuff, so forth. So that's how it looks. And you mentioned before that uh, the key space is uh, covered by each of the nodes. So we can go and look at that. Pardon? Yeah, so as we are you aware, th this is really up to you. Uh, we call it zones. So here in this installation, we have two servers per zones, but those could be in different fire zones in a data center or different data centers. It's, it's up to you when you, you deploy it. So in, in this specific setup, um, we have six servers, but there is always two servers in a single enclosure and on a single power outlet. So that's why we combine two servers per zone. So we'll take a look quickly at the, the key space. So here we have per, okay, each server is called store one through store six, and they are each running six nodes. And here you can see where, which key space is assigned to it, to each of the nodes. So that's just a very, very, very brief uh, overview of the, the UI. Um, we can look here at hardware inventory as well. So here we see zone one, zone two, zone three, and the different machines. And then we have scale up volumes as well. You can define any number of those. So here we have three ones. So here would cinder volumes, for instance, would land on, on such a volume. Uh, so. 
So here I'm going to, uh, to upload a glance image to, to our dev stack that is running here, and it stores the glance image uh, there, down there on our installation. So let's go to, let's see if I need to re-log in here first. So we're going to go uh, to images. So here we have the standard dev stack images, and we're going to create a new image and call it Ubuntu. And we need a, the NFS common uh, package in order to mount the Manila share. So we prepared an image with that. And here I will say, OK. Please upload this. And I think we're fine with the defaults. An image. So this is uploading right now, and in the supervisor we have an object count. We can see, look at the data ring, holding the actual data. We can see that right now we have 4,031 unique objects, and that one should increase once this is uploaded. Or maybe it's already uploaded actually. So here. Okay, we will do some more operations. Oh yeah, here we see, it increased 61. Okay, so I'm gonna start an image, start, start an instance using this image. Uh, so we call it uh, Scale-T Manila, perhaps, or Dem, yeah, Manila, why not? Uh, use the uploaded image, it's stored on the ring. And uh, yeah, let's take a small one. And uh, yeah, networking is fine. We would need a key. Okay, we're all good. Let's launch. Let's see. So now I'm gonna create a one terabyte volume and mount it in the machine that we just launched. And this is also the, the Manila volume is hosted by our ring down here. So let's see, this one should be up soon, yeah. So here we can SSH Ubuntu at 10.04. All right, we're in, cool. So let's go to shares. I have a previous share, we can create a new one. We call it Scality. Let's make it a terabyte. And here we can select Scality as a share type. It's the only share backend that we have installed. And we don't really care about the availability zones, of course. Uh, submitting the form, oh, that's funny. Let's try again. Try making it a bit smaller. I think your uh, resource cap is set to oh, 1,000 okay. gigabytes. Okay, let's try 500 then. Test two then. Okay. Scality share type. Ah, demo effect, of course. <laughs> Should you log in again? I think I'm logged out. No, I should be. So that's unfortunate. Um, why don't we look at this share here? This one is all good. Well, I will not do live debugging, I think. <laughs> we, as we have a dev stack, we could attach, see what's going on 
அந்த It's actually fine. It seems like it's the form itself that doesn't want to uh, to be submitted. So it's a more of a horizon problem. We are running a dev stack here, so it's not a stable version. So, so what if I submit it differently? Yeah, NFS, of course. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Um, so we do have a current share. Let's see if we can mount that one instead. And this one should already have an access rule that is not this IP, so if I try to mount this, it should fail with a permission error. I'll just create the mount point. Operation not permitted. So our driver is uh, operating properly. It seems to be a UI problem. So let's see if the UI allows us to uh, to actually add a permission here. So we manage rules and let's add another rule. Read write to the IP was ten zero zero four. Okay, that seems to be okay. So now we should be able to mount it, right? Okay. Yeah, so um, I now actually mounted it. Uh, let's go in as root. Okay, so we have our hello hosting. That's something I created earlier during test. So we can touch another file here. Oh, again. All right, so it's mounted. Uh, now comes something more interesting <laughs> than just showing that this is actually there. So we're going to launch a ping to one of the storage nodes, and uh, Nicola here is going to help me to unplug it. Uh, but before you do that, I just need to get the IP right here. So. This one, and I'm going to ping 10.0.10.11, and it seems to work. So can you unplug sure. number six? Okay. There it goes. Good. So we can go into the the supervisor UI. It should catch up shortly. Okay, it's still not. It's not caught up yet. We can go ahead and launch another instance while waiting for it to catch up. So, uh, so this is in degraded mode. Called uh, degraded start. And here we take our Ubuntu again, and we go with a small one. Fine. Uh, network is fine by default. We add our key. Okay. It should be fine. I hear something happened. So, Nicola, what's actually going on on the ring right now when you unplug the node? So, once we unplug this node, um, the keys it was supposed to manage will start to become managed by the next node in this logical ring, which we showed in the slides before. Um, and our rebuilt processes, which uh, detect that a certain server is no longer available, or a disk is no longer available, or something is wrong in your ring installation. Uh, will we'll ensure that the class of service is restored again. So the number of copies of your user application is bumped, so an extra copy is made for every disk which is no longer available. Or if you use erasure coding and you lost some data or parity chunks, then those are recreated as well on some other nodes. Uh, once the node com once the nodes which we just plugged out um, comes back, 
then um, all the data will be reconciliated to that node, the data that should have been there from the beginning, um, and everything is back to normal. Now it's important to note that even though in the supervisor um, we still saw this green image in, um, in the beginning, even though we plugged out a node, everything will still run. So we don't need the supervisor to be up to date all the time at all. Uh, the connectors can still access at all the other nodes and we'll figure out where to store the data or retrieve the data. Yeah, so here I logged in on the, the machine that we just launched. Um, I think, no, I was lying to you here. Number five, yes, that's better. So even though the storage system was in degraded mode, we were still able to launch an instance which then fetched again its glance image from the ring. That's right. So now we're gonna go over to Swift. We're gonna create a container and uh, upload a movie that is eventually gonna land on the ring. So yeah, we, we uh, will see a demo of our Swift uh, integration. Make it public. Okay. And in here, can upload a movie. This. <laughs> Thank you. And we can, by the way, we can check also that the Manila is still uh, still reachable. So here we can still list our files even though we are in degraded mode. Everything is good. Um, okay, so let's see if we can start the movie. Just gonna grab this URL here and start it in the player. Slash. Little bit of copy pasting here. This is really demo effect, isn't it? What am I doing wrong? Forgot to slash. Oh. I must have forgot the part. Sorry about this. It should really work. I don't get it. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it was a copy paste error. I don't know. So he, this guy should be running somewhere? Yeah, there he is. All right, so let's go back to the slides. Um, so would you please reconnect? Sure. Or we can take a look at the, the supervisor UI. Uh, done. Okay. So this also takes a while before the supervisor is, is aware that it's, it's backup should be a matter of 15 seconds or so. Oh, okay, quicker. If we have time, we can take a demo of Cinder later, but uh, for now, I think I'll leave the floor to you. Okay, thank you, Bjorn. So, um, as a short recap, um, as you could see, um, Scality Ring can be integrated with any OpenStack-related storage service. Um, it gives you basically unlimited uh, capacity and performance. It really scales up with the numbers of servers and spindles you throw against the system. 
Uh, we support any kind of x86 hardware, um, so you have really as you pay agility, and you can grow with your business easily. Um, this is, except during a demo, of course, 100% reliable. Uh, we really have proven resilience at petabyte scale deployments. Uh, I myself, I've, I've worked on projects of tens and tens of petabytes. Um, and Scality is definitely um, dedicated to OpenStack's future, um, and as such, you can benefit from the growth um, and compatibility of both Scality and OpenStack. That leaves time for some questions. Um, whenever you leave the room, there's more t-shirts over there. So, any questions? Go ahead. As far as what goes, sorry. Um, ha, huh, very good one. Um, we are um, available, well, it, it basically depends on which connector you are using, uh, because the file system, you want it to be consistent. Um, at the object layer, the very lowest object layer, we are available and we are partition um, tolerant, not necessarily uh, consistent. It is currently V3. Yes. Um, due to how NFS works, your client will need to um, restart the non-committed um, data it sent before. Uh, so it's fairly standard NFS v3 failover. We don't have any magic in the back end. Indeed, and we are looking into v4 support, but as of now, in the public pro product, we don't support v4. Good question. Um, as Bjorn mentioned before, we have a couple of rings defined um, on that system. We have one ring for data storage, one ring for metadata storage. Uh, the metadata ring is a ring which in the end runs on SSDs. And that is the, the, the mostly used um, installation met, um, architecture. You only need this uh, when you want to use the file system. Uh, unless you want to have very, very fast object storage, then you can scale up in SSDs as well. Um, but you don't need an SSD layer if you are only doing, sorry, you do, um, but not as, not as a ring. So the, the capacity in SSD you need is much smaller than the um, actual data storage. And for where flash doesn't really it does. Um, as I said before, for block, we currently um, store a QCO2 file on a data ring. Um, you may want to use an SSD-backed data ring, um, but then you'll lose the, 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 um, the, the financial benefit. We are really large scale. I think I'll let you talk to our product manager. <laughs> I honestly don't know. So product manager Paul is over there. Any other questions? Go ahead. Indeed, um, we do support rename. If that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any others? Then we can wrap up here. Uh, Scality crew will be, oh. Uh, I think currently that's three. Yeah. And that's it, we'll be around. Bjorn, myself, there's Paul, product management, Dan, uh, Jerome, CEO, even came to watch us. Uh, and we'll be around, we have a boot, uh, C9. Uh, you can find us on GitHub. Um, there's a couple of papers on our OpenStack part of the website. And as said before, T-shirts. Thank you. <laughs>